Tell me you got some story juice. I'll give you the Commodore Red. Classy. He snatches the bottle and pushes the cork in through the bottleneck. You pushed it in? This last one is the most Martinet story I've ever heard. I don't know what that means. He takes an almost comically long swig. <sighs> Thus fortified, he continues. I've never heard it mentioned outside of here. At first, I thought it was a joke, to be honest. But I've been on the coast eight, nine months now, and in that time, I've seen at least three expeditions come through searching for something. Are you talking about the phasmid? A shovel hits the sand somewhere behind the reeds, near an abandoned construction yard. The young men look over their shoulders suspiciously. The sound of their digging seems loud in the sudden silence. I can ask him if they're looking for his lost keys. The cryptids. Magic animals? No, man, this is serious stuff. Your, your keys? Hey, hey! <laughs> Fuck you, Tequila. I'm sorry. A uh, place to call home? No, Tequila. Most people already know where they live. It's guys like you and me that are the exceptions. All right, what kind of expedition is this? All kinds. I've seen archaeologists, gangsters, even a bunch of ad agency types. I'm telling you, Tequila, this thing's got a pull on certain kinds of people. What do you mean? You know, obsessive types. People with predilections. Uh, I need you to explain exactly. Some of those expeditions come back after a week or so, looking haggard and dejected. Others don't return at all. The first time I saw one of these expeditions, I thought they were fucking with me. There was no way it could be true. It was just too high concept, even for me. I'm not even sure I should be telling you this story, to be perfectly honest. You're in a fragile state, and it might be too much for you to handle. Uh, I can handle it. Okay, fine. I'll tell you. But I'm warning you, it's pretty out there. Our story begins at a legendary design studio, right here in Martinez. There was this designer. His exact name is lost to history, but in life, he was a legend. Made it big in Aranya, where he did some real pioneering work on grotesque and sans-serif typography. A fucking genius, man. That is, if he even existed. Who knows? It's an urban legend, after all. Anyway, sometime later, he started his own personal studio here in Martinez. And that's when he started working on some really wild stuff. I'm talking some glass-smooth, forward-looking design language. The kind of thing that would totally overthrow the old regime, design-wise. A paradigm-shattering revolutionary? But then, something turned. You see, it's widely known that nose candy and pioneer graphic design work go hand in hand. Nose candy? You know tequila, nose candy, the white railroad, party powder. The kids on the streets also call it Snow Day. <laughs> Sinus salt, the white knight. Can't see, for its popularity among the aristocratic class of the prior century. Along with a number of more banal street names. Glow, of course, but also flake, powder, pearl. Really, anything that's white will get the idea across. <laughs> He's talking about cocaine, baby. I got that. Oh, uh, I'm gonna ask the question, apparently. Shit, yeah, Tequila. You know exactly what I'm talking about. He gives you a camaraderie bump on the shoulder as a couple millimeters of booze slash out of his bottle. So what happened? You've got to understand, the work this guy was doing was so high concept that regular amounts of cocaine just weren't cutting it. By the end, they were bringing it in by the lorry load. Now, as you might imagine, Snorting that much cocaine can't be healthy for a regular human, right? Right. Even endurance is like, yeah. Wrong. <laughs> Do it all the time. All the time? All day, baby. Electrochemistry. Hey, tequila, pay attention. 
The story goes that one day he was balls deep in work on what he thought would be his pièce de résistance, an advert so minimal it contained neither text nor images, just pure white. Apparently the idea was too high concept even for this genius. He dropped dead right at his desk before he could finish. His last words are recorded to have been, It's as white as a blizzard of cocaine. What a loss for the world of design. That's a stupid idea. First one. I know, Tequila. I know. Ugh. <sighs> He takes a swig, considers pouring some out for this lost genius and thinks better of it. But the story doesn't end there. Supposedly, when they performed the autopsy, the coroner discovered nearly a quarter kilo of coke jammed into his nasal cavity. That's almost certainly anatomically impossible. Wrong again, nerd. <laughs> Where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> That's right. 250 grams of blow had accumulated in there over the years. We're talking high-grade Saramaritzian pure. Not that cut-rate shit your grandma does. There are those who believe the designer was buried with this quarter key of nose candy still lodged in his sinuses. That's what those expeditions are looking for. Are you serious? The cocaine skull. Co what? The cocaine skull. Wow. No. Wow. Why do people think the skull is in Martinez? Here's the kicker. This designer, this lead designer of a world famous design studio, was born in Martinez. A local boy, Martin Martinez. That's why he brought his studio here, back to where it all began. And that's why they buried him here, too. Perhaps right under Ab's pipe there. He points to the pipe. Or probably further down the coast, or in some yard in Martinez proper. A hidden mausoleum. No one knows exactly. No, my grandma always told me his grave lay somewhere on the islets on the bay. Hmm. This is ludicrous <laughs> and physically impossible. Sinuses can contain that amount of anything. Now, now, detective. Always the skeptic. <laughs> what do these expeditions plan to do with it? The archaeologists say they want to put it in a museum. The gangsters say they want to sell it on the black market. And the ad agency guys say they're seeking inspiration. Mm hmm Bullshit. <laughs> they just want to snort it. But you could beat them to it, Harry. You could snort the magic skull cocaine instead. I, I don't think I should be taking advice from you, electrochemistry. I'm pretty sure they all just want to snort it, though. Yeah. And why wouldn't they, eh? Sounds like right strong stuff. Rosemary, you said something about the inlets? Don't listen to him or his grandma. He's just making things up. And how would you know? No, my grandma told me. I've heard other people say it too. That it's underwater. Or oh, no. Maybe it was the storm suit. Maybe it's in that building we can't get into? Or maybe it's in the air. Or in an ancient state pyramid offshore. In a pyramid? Now that would be something. What have you learned from the expeditions? They're pretty vague about it in general. The gangsters like to claim they're looking for the grave of a friend with picks and shovels. The archaeologists act all official about it, saying they're conducting serious research. Honestly, I think they're not really scientists, just rich. The junkies, for some reason, are pretty upfront about it. They just say they're looking to snort some blow out of a dead man's nasal cavity. <laughs> honest men on an honest quest. <laughs> you should join them. By now, I'd say I know about as much about it as anyone on the coast. All right, I'm convinced I'm going to find it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on just a minute. Finding it right now is literally impossible. What? Why? For one, the way is blocked by that big lorry that says Delta Logistics Company on the side. You definitely have to search the area behind that lorry too, yet it is impassable. 
Wait, there's 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 another part to this to this game. <laughs> and second, outfitting an expedition like that is expensive. It'd have to be a big production to do the cocaine skull justice. You need new gear, people who know what they're doing, all kinds of provisions. It's just not feasible within the economic and temporal frame of our current setup. Matter of fact, unless a bunch of money just falls out of the sky, we might never know what's up with that skull. I have to agree. We barely have what we need to solve the case we've got now. We can't afford to run around chasing after quasi-mythical pieces of drug paraphernalia. Yes, we can, Cam. Besides, it would look extremely bad for the RCM to be caught up in something that has the word cocaine writ large on it. The PR is tricky on this. That's too bad. Wait, maybe there's another way. Maybe up around the coast? Don't give up now. Yeah, well, that's the reality situation for you. Who knows, though? Maybe someday we'll get our chance. You have any more stories? Not that I can think of, currently. Okay, you have been drinking a lot. That might be the case, yeah. I will leave you alone. Cool, alright, we got signatures. What do I need to do? Dead body on the boardwalk. Call the station. Call the library. Look for Ruby on the coast. Enter the cavern. Union and crypto zoology business might end when you do, so I don't want to... Put the... Okay, put the envelope in the mailbox. We got to go to Kim's thing. Find out local kids might know. Find a working transceiver. Alright, let's do... Check the island for bullet cherries. So I've missed one. Yeah, why is Joyce here? I'll just keep the core de Leche in the channel, if that's okay. It's too shallow near the pier. She winds the mooring line around a post. Hi, ma'am. And it's a jetty, by the way. Of course. Jetty. I prefer a good jetty to a pier any day. Jet, jet, jetty. Hello. Hello, detectives. She fastens the end of the line around the post and straightens her back. It's good to see you here. I only just arrived myself. What brings you here, madame? Nothing, really. I've had my eye on this jetty for weeks now, so I decided to investigate it personally. This cluster of buildings isn't on any of the official maps, as far as I can tell. That. And she's also keeping an eye on you. Have you been spying on us? Spying has such a negative connotation. I did track your progress along the coast, however, and decided I would be better able to assist you from here. Then there's the matter of that little scamp in old lady clothes. She threatened to paint the cordelate she read. Like blood, you see. Well, I like it the way it is. White. Hmm. How do you like it here? Look around. Hmm. How do I like it? She casts her gaze toward the village, slush melting on the cinder blocks, construction work left half finished ten years ago. Water drips down eaves of etonite. The jetty below her feet creaks to the tune. The smell of salt and dog shit in the background. It's pornographically poor. Why? The street has no name, all the men are dead or missing. And is that the carcass of a motor carriage over there? Oh god, she squints her eyes. I'm surprised that woman hasn't put me to the sword yet. Maybe she will. You should ask your questions while you can. Dark eyes survey the coast leading up to Martinez. Dull grey metal rests in her scabbard. A sword. The wind is too loud for her to hear. Fortunately for you, madame. The RCM is on the scene. All right. Politics time. Let's react. You're right to be scared. This is all your fault. You're in no danger. The working class have no idea what's happening to them. Try not to be scared. This is just how the real city looks. Place is doomed either way. What? What is this? Maybe. She leans against the railing looking up at the gray sky. Above you, there forms a quilt of alto cumulus clouds twisting into each other. The wind tugs and stretches them over the bay. 
Their cloud shadows slide over the ruins of Revachol West. Wherever they pass, the temperature drops slightly, but perceptibly. Have I told you how they discovered this place? The wind picks up. Her raincoat flaps in the gust. The fishing village? No. They're in Celindian, Isola. No, you haven't. Well, your condition has left you no worse off than most of these people. The literacy rate is around 45% west of the river. Fifty years of occupation have left these people in an oblivion of poverty. Oblivion. That's so me. I knew you would sympathize. Most Revacholians will never know what this place means. Our home. This island of matter. Or why they were ferried over in the first place. Remind me to tell you one day. For now, how can I assist you in this new location? She corrects the scarf around her neck. Uh, tell me now we have time? Tell me something else then? I guess to- oh, I don't know. What? Do we? It doesn't look like he does, okay? I hear you have singled out a suspect and are in pursuit. This is cause for cautious optimism. I would not want to delay you. This story she will tell only before she leaves Martinez at the very end of her stay. Maybe there is something else I can assist you with okay. while you're hot in pursuit. I talked to Everett Clare. You have. And how did you like Mr. Clare? He's a beautiful man, beautiful and just, the hero of the workers' movement. He's a bloated rainbow socialist. Uh, he's not the champion I've chosen. I wish to swear fealty to you and the cause of capital. I didn't like him. Oh, come on now. He has his uses. How else would he have stayed in power all these years? Or wait, actually... She answers her own question. Corruption. That's how he's done it. Fantastic. Verm-like. Corruption. Reaching into the bowels of the earth. She looks at the ground and nods. The position of my unusual colleague does not reflect official policy. I hope you understand. The RCM does not pick sides. Of course. And I don't expect you to share anything he told you with me. I'm not a corrupt verm myself. However, if you felt like discussing something, how could I stop you? Are we not human? Are we not curious to hear another person's take? It's only natural. We would only be gossiping. She smiles. Intellectually speaking, it would be quite interesting to hear what she has to say about these things. The money you gave me, would that make things weird if I shared information? Weird? Oh no. One of the positive things to come from the revolution is the unhindered exchange of information you see, even when it comes to trade secrets. Which isn't to suggest our talks constitute corporate espionage. Even if they did, it would be fine. But they don't, since you logged the money as a donation, and this is clearly just gossip between friends. I didn't log it. The lieutenant might have, but I don't remember you logging anything as anything, Harry. Uh, Mr. Everett is helping me find my gun? Oh. That's so helpful of him. Her eyes become round and large. The lieutenant looks at you, and you can swear his jaw muscle is trembling. When I said be wacky, I didn't mean wildly, grossly irresponsible and damaging to the RCM. I... She, we're just gossiping. And conventional police officers sometimes lose their guns. They then go around and tell people about this to gauge their reactions. It's all part of detecting. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to admit I lost my gun. Incredible. Simply incredible. And how is it going? Has this detecting produced a gun? Mr. Everett says it's almost ready to be found. Did he now? Well, then it should be any day now. 
Unless, of course, he's lying to you. Anyway, was there anything else you've heard? <laughs> Sorry, Kim. Hmm. <laughs> Perhaps he is. Yeah, I... I don't know what... I feel like he's toying with us. Uh, I helped him turn up the heat on the borscht. Did you now? What sort of borscht is he making? She's intrigued, if a little confused. The cook makes it to help keep the strikers drunk. The strike brew. That's a classic. And by turn up the heat, I presume you mean put more alcohol in it? Yes. Why, if I may ask? Why make them more drunk? Aren't they corked enough already? Yes, detective. What were you hoping to accomplish with this strange thing? <laughs> An act born of sympathy for the working man. I worship Al Ghul in many ways. It's uninteresting. I thought it would make the broth taste better. Um. Yes. The, I worship the Al Ghul. Very curious. A very curious thing to do. She blinks both eyes. Truly. But that's how he operates. He just does things, man. And then talks about them. Even if it seems broken. <laughs> A strange equanimity has overtaken the lieutenant. He's just going with the flow now. Easier that way. Kim is just giving in. <laughs> what else? Kim has surrendered to the chaos. He asked me to deliver an envelope. Sounds like he has you running errands, detective. A well-established dominance ritual. Where did he have you deliver it? Here. Here? Oh, no. What does that bloated hellbat want with my little cinder block town? Your cinder block town. It's clear the village has already grown dear to her. Aww. Strangely so. Why did she come here? No, don't tell me. I don't want to know what he has in store for this place. Probably a statue. It's a statue, right? No. A giant statue of him. Or better yet, his twin brother. Practically the same thing, but makes him seem less like a psychopath. He wants to build a youth center. A youth center with Edgar Clare's statue on top of it. <laughs> she looks down the jetty remorsefully. Go ahead. Help him. Make it so. I have no power to stop him. It's all right. We forged the signatures, so they're not legal. You're quite fond of this village. I should be. In my youth, I had a brief dalliance here in Martinez. He was an older man with impossibly broad shoulders. Aww. He's probably dead by now. Even his shack is long gone. Not that it matters. These buildings are all carbon copies of one another. When you were a teen, slumming it like you told me before. I'm glad to see your short-term memory appears intact. In any case, I wasn't a teen anymore. I would have been in my early 20s. I remember a distinctly vile disco track. Disco isn't vile. It is, but not as vile as me. She looks at the Eternite and cinder block soaking the overgrown carcass of some motor carriage. Sounds like you miss those times. Not overly so. It's not like this was the only place we visited. Me and my girlfriends from Azon with our shiny boats, like Reavers. We told ourselves we were the worst thing to happen to the coast since the Coalition landed in 08. Imagine. She tosses her head. Oh no. She's sentimental, all right. Why would she come here otherwise? Why did you come here then, to this jetty? I'm over-radiated, detective. Do silly things sometimes. Out of pale-related sickness. Like, sail over here. The moral of the story is... Do not spend 22 days a year in pale transit. Don't waste your 20s slamming it with your stupid friends. Mm. And don't deliver Everard Claire's <laughs> mail. Her bony finger is pointed like an arrow at your chest. Are you satisfied, detective? What else can you tell me about your mail delivery quest for Everard? Do you think it will improve the place? Would you prefer something else, not a youth center? First, there won't be a youth center. Whatever he has told you or the residents, there'll be something horrific, perhaps even worse than a statue. So, yes, I do. Like what? A fishery. I've been speaking with Lillian here. She gave me the idea. The infrastructure is all here, and with my connections. Sadly, it's just one of the million things I'll never get round to. I just have to accept that I'll never be the rich candy girl who goes around solving people's problems with money. 
So you're sad you can't buy the place? Yes. I'm sad I'll never have the time, Detective. I've always wanted a dilapidating fishing village. <laughs> she is more defensive about it than usual. Aww. Full of ghosts and ancient memories. Has this errand yielded you any information? Let's talk about something else for now. Of course, Detective. Should something come up later down the road, don't be afraid to drop by for a chat. Until then, is there anything I can help you with? I found my badge. I love you did. <laughs> she inspects a piece of blue plastic, her eyes scanning from left to right. She is memorizing your badge number. Pleased to meet you, Lieutenant W. Freighter Dubois. <laughs> I am glad to see a man of high qualification. The situation is precarious. What can I help you with, Lieutenant Tia Freighter? We're, we're done. We're done. All right. I'm glad we talked to her. Um, can I tell you? Oh, Why yeah. Are beginning to die down? I was going to tell her that we forged those um, signatures, but it doesn't matter. It's not important. We are going to sleep here tonight. I remember that. Oh, this is not the way. Okay, I think I can fast travel now. No. No. You have to be in a very specific spot. We're walking it. Stars break them all. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Uh, pick up the radio. This is precinct 57. How may I assist you? Connect me to the public library? I'm afraid they're closed. Oh. It says here that the library is open from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Okay. We should try again during business hours. Anything else, detective? Did she find out more about the armor? Yes. It took yes. some convincing, but I got the mercenary's name and a few biographical details. Are you ready? Yes, please. The lieutenant leans in to listen. Notebook in hand. Shoot. That suit of armor was issued to an Orani citizen named Elis Cortenaer. That's E-L-L-I-S K-O-R-T-E-N-A-E-R. Exact date of birth unknown. He was signed into the Lelystad County Neonatal Care Unit on 28th of February, 09. Neonatal Care Unit? He was found as a newborn in a leaf compactor near an abandoned farm. He spent four months in the Neonatal Unit, survived apparently, and was assigned to a foster family at two. According to Classia, Lele said his real name wasn't really his. Perhaps that's because he was fostered. This is what the ICP knows about him. He was raised by foster parents, entered the East Brand Military Academy in Vredefort at 17, then served in the Oranese forces till he was honorably discharged in 41, just a year before the Seminese conflict. Then the armor followed him to Seminine, or at least I assume it did. And that's it. There are no records of his employment in Trenel, or any of its other incarnations, or him even entering Ravachon. Wait, he was found in a leaf compactor? It's a garden tool used to press leaves into these cubes. It's a detail the hospital had. The only detail in these files. So I thought it would be good for you to know. Dang. It is. Thank you, Alice. Any information on his foster parents? None, officer. Sorry. So his name wasn't his because he was fostered. Ah, yes. What class you said. Very good. That makes sense to me. He takes a quick note. So all we have to connect him to Cronell is the armor. Even that is a small miracle. These organizations usually double-check their inventory. Thank you, Elise. Great work. No problem, Lieutenant. She sounds pleased. Well, we have his name and service record now. A name? This is very good. Elise Cortenard. This means something to him. To know that name. Like name in a case. It's important. Sometimes, police work is about human dignity. About giving back names to anonymous victims. I'm glad the inquiry was helpful to your investigation, officer. Did you have any other questions? I need to report a dead body on the Martinez boardwalk. One moment. You can hear her shuffling through some papers. Can you please describe the body? Age, sex, cause of death? Unidentified middle-aged man, height, 
170 to 75 centimeters, dark hair, medium build. Looks like he slipped, fell through a hole in the boardwalk and hit his head against the metal bench. Oh, that's why if the bench hadn't been there, he wouldn't have hit his head. Got it. We suspect he might have been inebriated when he fell. There were bottles all around him and traces of vomit on his shirt. Any signs of violence? Seems like it was an accident. No field autopsy necessary. You can hear her quickly typing in the background. What about his belongings? Did you examine his clothes? He was wearing boots, trousers, an old leather jacket with a bright blue lining. I found a library card from his pockets. Any information on the library card? It's from Central Jamrock Public Library. Belongs to someone named Billy... May... May... I don't know. Good. You have a lead. <laughs> Do you and Lieutenant Kitsuragi want to take the case, or should I assign it to someone else? We're taking it. I have assigned the case to Lieutenant King Kitsuragi. Please follow up on this library lead to identify the man. We'll send someone to take the body to the morgue. That's all for now. Thank you for reporting in. Is there anything else I can do for you? I'm done for now. 57th, over and out. Her voice disappears into the void. In the cabin, you see a set. Let's go talk to Klausia. And tell her about her passport. Oh. Hi again, Gendarme. Hmm. I was going to tell you that... Oh, I met your friend? You did? And how did you like him? Oh, okay. We've, we've talked about I this. I told you. Okay. He can be very useful. Hmm? Bye-bye, gendarme. Okay. All right. I wanted to tell him I found his friend on the coast, but apparently it's not important. Oh, I, I have to mail the thing. I forgot to mail the thing. I need to mail the thing after talking to her. <laughs> I was like, there was something else I needed to be in town for. Ooh, wait, come back. She's made around four months of payments for this room. I was just thinking, what a nice evening it is for taking part in a murder investigation. I found your buoy. It was empty. Just see water. Oh. Her eyes widen. Did you take the document? No, of course not. As I said, it would have been too risky for me to use those documents anyway. My employer gave them to me. In truth, I should have destroyed them. She doesn't seem to be lying. She's genuinely spooked by their disappearance. But I can't trust you. You might be in danger of file this under a theft of some kind. Thank you, but actually, now that I think about it, you mentioned seawater. I was worried I'd been too careless with the latch mechanism. The documents were probably just washed away. She waves her cigarette. The words, washed away, sound distant and strange suddenly. Somewhere far away, a dog barks. Why do I feel like you've won here? I really don't know, sir. I certainly don't feel like I've won. I feel like shit, sir. All the time. She takes a sip of her cold coffee. She smiles. A bitter little smile. She means it. But this turned out well for you. You've slipped past all suspicions. Clearly, I haven't. We're having this conversation, aren't we? How well could it have gone, I mean? She looks around. The wet wind, heavy with brine and industrial pollution from the stacks nearby, ruffles her hair. I'm stuck in Martinez just like all of us. I've been up here for... I don't know how long now. I like to call this my rooftop containment facility. What are you contained for, then? For my sins, of course. The long-standing sins of a bad, frivolous person. For destroying my first love. For working for bad people. The list goes on and on. It's turned out well enough for you. You somehow managed to not become a suspect. Did I? Why do I still feel suspicion hanging over me, then? What I managed was to get him killed. I understand that. The lieutenant looks away, over the railing. He feels uncomfortable with this conversation. He doesn't know what to add. Something feels off with this theory I've developed about Ruby. I don't know what to say. It all seems fortuitous for you. None of this is fortuitous for me. Alright, that's it then. She nods, slowly, carefully even. There is suddenly a strange glint in her eyes. 
Not malicious, but dangerous. Hmm. All right. That's the conversation route we went down. The dented yellow mailbox greets you with its graffito and bullet holes in the front. I knew we'd get to use this mailbox for something. Yes, for sending mail. <laughs> drop the envelope into the mailbox. You drop the white envelope in the darkness. It lands with a soft thud on what sounds like a couple of letters. About a week's worth of mail as collected in there. They'll empty this very soon. Probably did the right thing. You can't trust that slug, Everard. You know he's going to play you somehow. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go back to Everard. If we don't mention anything to him, he won't know before it's too late. Cool. So, that's the next thing we need to do. What else do we need to do? Let's run to Everett and get that done. And I should put my tie back on. Don't know when I will need that bottle. Was this there before? I think it was. A common office radio. Like oh. any of those found in countless waiting rooms, lounges, and other semi-public spaces all over the world. Oh, this is the office he was talking about. How do I get the transceiver out of this thing? There's usually a little switch somewhere. Ah, yes. It's the one that says release. Awesome. Flip the release switch. The lock disengages with a nice click. Yay. You may now safely remove the transceiver unit. Examine it. There's nothing obviously remarkable about it. It's about the size of a common pasta box with knobs of molded plastic. What else is there to say? If this transceiver were a person, it would be an accountant at a large logistics firm. Perfectly competent, but unexceptional. I prefer a transceiver with a little more flash and style. There's something ominous about this radio transceiver. It's an ill omen. Sorry for stealing your transceiver. There's no other way. Tap it with your knuckles. Yeah, this will do. Very good. Let's get going, then. The transceiver appears glad to be of service. You will actually be able to reach the coalition with this? You've surprised me more than once during the course <laughs> of our investigation. But I have to say, it still seems like a remote scenario. He shrugs. All right. With its transceiver gone, the radio has ceased its persistent buzzing. It is as silent as a headstone. Someone is habitually chilling next to the radio. Someone hangs out here. Well, we just killed the radio, so... What am I supposed to call? The payphone hangs mute. I was supposed to call the library. That's what it was. Let's save, just in case. Mr. Dubois, every worker. He leans towards you, waiting for you to complete the sentence. A member of the board? That's right, Mr. Dubois. I see the socialist democratic fervor now burns in your heart, too. How can I help you today? I mailed the signatures, you asked. The golden boy returns once more. Wonderful. Simply wonderful, Harry. Of course. I already knew this. He claps his hands together like a child who's just been offered cotton candy. My friend, the mailman, confirms the letter is on its way. You've done a great thing today. You've given the children of Martinez a bright future, and you've proven yourself someone I can trust. Someone I can really do business with. You're in my inner circle. You too, Mr. Kitsuragi. We can talk about anything. Ooh. The strike, the murder, your lost gun, Nothing is off the table. Oh, Bratan, you play the old man like a three-string banjo. He has no idea. Thank you, Necktie. Better not to gloat, sire. Tis arrogance that gives the play away. Be subtle. Signatures I got. I know you plan to force them out with a construction noise. Did you order the hangman killed? Can I get my gun now? Harry, I've got to be honest with you. Your gun was found two days ago. Withholding this information weighed heavily on me, but it had to be done. I had a feeling you had it. Where is it? An old woman has it, and let me tell you, Harry, word on the street is she's a character, so watch out. This must be the woman who bought the gun from Roy, the one he described as terrifying. So the gun is still with the woman who bought it from Roy? Yes, the same one. I see you've done your research. The pawn shop made the gun easy to track. 
Crazy stuff, Harry. Selling your gun like that? Wild. Anyway. He smiles and shakes his head in wonderment. Union Boy's gonna help you fix it. He winks at you. Don't worry, Harry. The neighbors of this old woman contacted my men because they trust me and the Debardeurs Union. Apparently, she was waving it around at the entrance to her building. Waving the gun around doesn't sound good. None of this does. She was waving it around? As I said, she's a character. I didn't have time for details. It sounds like she's unstable, but don't worry. No one got hurt. It sounds like a very disturbed and desperate individual. Who is this old woman? Unfortunately, I don't know anymore. You're gonna have to go in blind, Harry. Really? But she's an old lady. How dangerous can she possibly be? Oh, and she calls herself the pigs. I don't believe you couldn't get any more information. There it is again. The pigs. Like Roy said, not good at all. I, for one, find it refreshing. Finally, someone calls themselves a pig. A smile flickers in the corner of his mouth. It actually sounds extremely bad, but let's not give him the satisfaction. Can you set up a meeting? I already have. Tonight, starting 10 o'clock, oh, near the old fish market on the coast, the one on the boardwalk, a little past the fishing village. Be careful, Harry. I would never set you up for anything dangerous, but you did ask for this. Now, back to the fun stuff. He claps his hands. She will be there from 2200 hours till 0200 hours. All right. More fun stuff. <laughs> Seems like we already have fun stuff to do. He looks at you. Did you order the hangman killed? Order it? You know my men didn't kill him. They told you. It was a happy accident. You know how it is. No one takes the initiative. If I wanted him dead, I would have had to do it myself. And I'm too fat for that. <laughs> why are you so fat? Why? Why is this a question? Glad you asked. I've got type 2 diabetes because sugar and fat was all my mother had to give me and my brother Edgar when we were kids. Good job too as it made me ugly. And ugly people, Harry, are much better at politics. He wags his finger at you. That is true. People don't trust pretty people. What do you gain from him being dead? Why a war, of course. And what do you have to gain from a war? Victory, Mr. Kitsuragi. I have victory to gain. We are going to start a war with the Wild Pines group and win before they even realize there is a war. You ever heard... What two giant Serenese hornets can do to an entire colony of bees, they destroy it. I have. It's a great story, Harry. Did you also know how the bee colony kills the giant hornet? They swarm and blanket it entirely until it suffers a massive heat stroke and dies. He crosses his hands contently, thinking of the interior temperature of the wasp rising. Harry, we outnumber them 1,500 to 1. And that's just Martin A's. With all the unions in Revachol, and with public opinion on our side, we can hold off two men, or 15 men, or even 50 men. The more they send, the worse it's going to look for them. They made a huge mistake hiring those guys. No one likes foreign mercenaries. The leftists hate them, the fascists hate them, even the moralists think they're in bad taste. How is this connected to the strike? Harry, there is no strike, only war. Class war. Or, in business terms, a dawn raid. Or wait. Is that when you still pay them something? Because we won't do that. He pauses to rub his chin. We're not going to give nothing. We're going to take Terminal B away from them. The roads, the gates, the containers, that big crane, even the damn coffee maker. We're going to take all of it for the people and fuck Wild Pines. The word fuck rings like a gunshot from his mouth. He doesn't swear often. So that's why you haven't let Joyce in? Yes. It's also why I let that midget Gormont go. He's too nice. I can't put him through this. Plus, he knows how to get in here. That woman can't tell her tits from her asshole. She has no chance. What? Tits from her arsehole. <laughs> it's a local saying. Actually, no. It's no, not. it's not. Why are, you, why are you telling me your plans? Because we're friends, Harry. Besides, it doesn't matter now. You can go tell her if you want. It won't change the course of events. 
We have a significant head start. It's already happening. He looks at the swordfish clock and nods. <sighs> Who killed the hangman? No idea. Could have been his own mother for all I know. If you ever find the guy, give him a big fat kiss from Everard Clare. Couldn't have done it without him. He really doesn't know. How do you know it's a guy? I don't. I told you it could have been his own mother. I'm pretty sure it wasn't anyone from the Union. Maybe it was the mob. Or maybe he killed himself because he was a closet socialist. Truth is, I simply don't know. He really doesn't. How many of you guys are there in the Union? 2,372. Plus yours truly, of course. 2,373 is a sizable contingent for a labor organization in Revachon. How are you going to fund your new independent harbor? Oh, you mean what sort of goods are going to be flowing through? How am I going to replace all the contacts we'll lose once the poo-poo hits the fan? The clients will ditch us. Harry, we've thought of everything. Clients would take a well-known multinational conglomerate over a local mobster any day. You can't possibly hope to continue like you have. Clients will leave. Sure, some will go, but mark my words. The company will be unpleasantly surprised to see how many of them stay loyal to Martin A's and to the new competitive contracts we can offer. With renewed zeal sparked by communal ownership, the men will be shipping those containers double time. You'll be surprised to see how fast things go without parasites latching on. We'll have our hands free to pursue bold exotic new revenue streams. Drug trafficking. Drug trafficking? Don't be stupid, Mr. Kitsaragi. There are perfectly legal, 100% ethical chemical factories on the Samarin Isola. You don't need to be colonialist about it. All they do is produce components to keep the pharmaceutical industry running. That's people's health we're talking about. Old grannies, little babes, people with disabilities. That's just the top of the iceberg though, isn't it? The company thinks transporting these chemicals in bulk looks bad. Has bad optics. May be illegal in some countries. The Debardes Union, however, we're all about the large volume column. We're going to transport the living daylights out of those materials, Harry. So your sick kid can get his benefit and your wacky uncle doesn't have to come off Risperazole. He bangs his fist on the desk once more. And the kids on the street can get speed and Pirelli done. I'm an old-fashioned guy, Mr. Kitsuragi. I sometimes grab a beer with the boys, but I have no idea about the things you just mentioned. He smiles. But if I were to supply ingredients for some sort of rainbow party, I would make sure the union took a fantastic share. And I'd keep that stuff far away from Martin A's. Is Ruby helping you secure this? Harry, if I was supplying raw materials to drug manufacturers, I would need an army of rubies. And this to it. The lieutenant nods slowly. Drugs are a no-go for me, I'll report this. Yes, yes, of course. And while you're doing that, please go ahead and also tell the Wild Pines. I want to hear them squeal from the indignity. He snickers. Anyway, let's not focus on the sensationalism of the drug trade. This hypothetical drug trade is all anyone ever seems to be interested in. It would only be a small part of the harbour's turnover, just like the harbour is, but a small part of Martin A's. It would still be illegal. Let's look at the big picture. Martin A's as a whole. There are little girls out there with dreams of making music. Young mothers who want to start businesses. Models who want to walk catwalks and steel welders who want to weld steel. I'm going to unite them all into one economic body. We're going to incorporate this place to kingdom come. Everyone's going to be in on the wealth and everyone's going to pull their weight. <laughs> if it has the word incorporate in it, then I like it. I'm a money guy. This is very ambitious. I love what you're doing for the working man. I'm not feeling a whole lot of reverschal here. Not enough flags or kings. Uh, I don't like any of this. Harry, the future I have in store for Martinez will have all the macho aesthetics you love so much. The crowns, the guns. I will even slip in a skull and bones for you, my friend. Oh yeah, skull and bones. Skull and bones on the Reversholian flag. The Reversholian death squad. Oh yeah, 
The visual image has completely bedazzled you. You're 100% with Everard now. No! Can I ask you... Alright, the signatures I got. I know you plan to force them out with the construction noise. Harry! By now, you should know I would never do anything tricky like that. However, if the construction noise and limited street access make some people consider moving... Well, let's just say there'll be freshly renovated buildings near the roundabout where those poor people can finally enjoy a significant uptick in quality of life. I'm talking real affordable workers' palaces. So the village is doomed. You were there. You saw the place. A wasteland. There's nothing left. But mark my words, officers. We are going to reset it. Reset. I have big plans for Martin A's. And they do not include humans living in those pig sheds on the coast. That land will be used for municipal buildings and commerce. He slams his fist on the table, causing some of the coffee to spill. What do you mean? Harry, imagine a youth center supermarket church complex. Employing hundreds, no, thousands of people. The coast will be lit up with enterprise and life. All those ruins out there turned into low-income housing. Harry, enough is enough. We're taking this district back. The war was 50 years ago, for God's sake. It's time to move on. You supermarket church complex? You really expect me to believe that? Yes, I do. I got the center, I got room for a retail complex, and in four years, I'll get the church too. The wheels are already turning, Harry. The wheels of progress. This post-war limbo, I won't stand for it. There are kids practically playing with their own feces out there. It cannot go on. There is true indignation in his voice when he speaks about the state of things, and even a touch of pain. Will you erect a statue to yourself? I'm not a symbolist, Harry. I'm a realist. My statue will be Martinez rebuilt. Five-story building complexes, workers on welfare, and landowners in Azon hating me. That will be my statue. And yours. We're doing this together. Joyce was right when she said you're up to something. Damn right I am, Harry. I'm gonna make the working man as rich as she is one day. That's my job. Just like yours is to keep the peace. His fist lands on the table again. A true flash of anger in him. As he thinks of her. Can I ask you about specific union members? We're way past specific union members now. This is the big time. We're talking about the future of Revachol here, Harry. You can bother Leonard with that. He loves to run his mouth on such matters. But I'm in big time mode, Harry. All right, that's all for now. Great, Harry, great. I think we have truly built a bridge between Martinez and Jamrock today. We have united the RCM and the Debardeurs Union. Suddenly there's a sadness in his tone. This has been so great. I'm sorry we don't have more fun things to do together, but if you ever feel like bouncing something off me, my door is always open. Uh, I have more questions? I'm always happy nope. to... It's very nice, Harry. I'm done. Is there any... See you soon, Debardeur. Just kidding. But not too much. The big man raises his hand in farewell. 